Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be looking at how to put together some budget Warcry warbands and campaign lists for the Alliance of Order. In this video, we'll focus on the Sylvaneth warband and also the Seraphon warband, and it's a little bit different to what I usually do, and this is a collab that I'm doing with the Salty Sea, and if you haven't seen his videos yet, I definitely recommend checking out the channel. There's some brilliant Warcry content on there that includes faction rundowns, list building, and a look at best units, and also battle and campaign reports. So definitely check it out. In this collab, we've challenged each other to come up with some budget warbands for a campaign and create some lists. So I can't wait to see what he comes up with. Okay, so let's get started on the two lists I've come up with, and the first one is for the Sylvaneth, and I've used the Warcry starter set to kick things off. It seems a bit weird to choose the most expensive Warcry Warband set that was released, but because we're going to be looking at campaigns, we want to expand this past 1000 points into 1400, and I think this is a good starting point for that, and you don't need to add too much to it, and certainly not too many sets to have a nice varied warband. First fighter that is included in this set is the Kurnoth Hunter with Great Bow, and he can also double up as a leader, becoming the Huntmaster, and this is a really great miniature to kick things off with. And if you haven't seen it already, I've done a video unboxing the Sylvaneth and going through all the fighter type cards. So I'm not going to go through that in this video like I usually do, but rather just give a, a little overview of each one and then do the list at the end and talking about why I think it would be fun to play. So this is the first one. And then the abilities, all the Sylvaneth fighters get a cool ability called Draw from the Spirit Song. And this is a double where they can remove a number of damage points equal, uh, allocated to them equal to half the value of the ability rounding up. So that's a really great universal ability there for all the Sylvaneth fighters. And this one's also got the trample underfoot, which is really great. But having that, that first double for all the Sylvaneth fighters is a real bonus. And he, this one's also got, for if he's a leader, if you choose him as a hunt master, he's going to have this quad Envoy of the Ever Queen, and this is going to in increase the toughness and strength of all the friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. So a great one there to empower all the fighters around him. Our next one is the Colonel Hunter with Great Sword, and you can see that there's some differences here. This one hasn't got that range, but it's got some certainly some power that it can put out, and for 180 points to get 30 wounds and. Uh, Strength 4, dealing 4 attacks with a 2 to 5 crit. That's a really great fighter for 180 points. And the abilities for this one are going to be the same. And again, if you choose them as the Huntmaster, you're going to get exactly the same abilities. And the same goes for this third Hunter, the Kurnoth Hunter. This one's with the Scythe, and he's a really good one as well. He's got a little bit more range, but he can't deal as many attacks, but those attacks are going to be really strong. So this is 3 dice to attack with uh, strength 4, dealing 3 to 6 on a crit. Again, it's only 90 point, 190 points with 30 wounds. So this is a really good value fighter for sure. And again, his fighter abilities are the same, and so is his leader abilities. And also in this Warcry Sylvaneth starter set, you get the Spite Revenants, but you can also use one of those as a Shade Stalker. So if you wanted to use your Shade Stalker as a leader, that's an option you've got. Um, Points-wise, the Spite Revenant is pretty good there with the four attacks, strength four, dealing one to three on a crit. And you've got a decent ability, which we'll check out in a minute. But to go up to 140, I don't know really. I mean, you've got five attacks, strength four, dealing two to four, which isn't bad, but I wouldn't choose this as my leader. And here we go. Here's the fighter ability. So again, the double draw from the Spirit Song. But this one also gets the Shrieking Terror, which pick a visible enemy fighter within a number of inches of this fighter, equal to the value of the ability, roll a dice. On a 3+, plus, and until the end of the battle round, that fighter cannot move or disengage actions. So that's really great. You can actually make players and fighters like stuck. They can't move. They can't escape. And so then you can rain down the punishment from your other fighters. 
So that's a pretty decent ability there for a low point 70 point fighter. And for the leader, if you choose them as a leader, you're only going to get one ability. And the next one's the Tree Revenant. Now these are interesting. These are just 50 points each, which is really low. And they don't look a lot here. You know, uh, three attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. And they've only got a toughness three and movement of eight. But when we see their ability later on, you'll see they're well worth these 50 points. And again, you can use this as a scion if you wanted to, and that would be your leader. So in this starter set, you get five miniatures, and you can choose whether to have them as tree revenants or spite revenants, or you can do a mix of each. So what I've done with my warband that I created from this is I went for three tree revenants and two spite revenants, and that just gave me some options. But this ability is really good, and this one here is called a triple called Walk the Spirit Paths, and you can remove the fighter from the battlefield and set them up anywhere on the battlefield floor more than five inches from enemy fighters. So if you want to get them out of trouble, that's really great. Or if you want to go and steal an objective really quick, then this is a brilliant ability. So to have that ability on a 50 point fighter, I think is really great. And that's going to give so many options tactically for this, this warband. And again, as the leader, they would just get that one quad ability. So from that set, this is the warband I've put together and I tried to get as many points as I can from it. Um, I could have gone all spite revenants and that would have ed added another 30 points but still the only maximum you can get from it is 940 um, and I didn't want all spite revenants. I really wanted those tree revenants to have that ability where you can move them around the, the battlefield really quickly. So I chose the hunt master with scythe as the leader and then those are the other fighters there. And so that's from that one set at £45, and you can get a 20% discount with that at Element Games, and I'll put a link below in the description. I think for £36, it's a really great set uh, with great value. If you bought those two sets separately, the Colonel Hunters and the Tree Revenants or Spite Revenants, you know, you're looking at over £60 there. And don't forget, you also get the cards and the tokens and everything in the pack with this. So to get started, for £36, if you can get up to 20% off there with Element Games, I think that's a great deal and um, you're, you're ready to play. Okay, so now let's move on and see what we can add. Because if you want to play a campaign mode, you're going to be going up to 1,400 points. And so you need more miniatures and there just isn't any spare miniatures in that Warcry set. So you've got a few options here. One is to add some Dryads and for £27.50, you're going to get loads. You're going to get a box here with what, 12, 16 dryads in there, and you're never going to need that many for Warcry. So perhaps you could split it with a friend, or maybe you play Age of Sigmar and you've got them already. That would be a bonus. But for that price, and again, you can get a discount on up to 20% on all these products. Um, and I'll put links to them all, everything we go through here in the description below. And so these dryads are going to come in at, at 70 points or 145 if you choose one as a leader. And I wouldn't choose one of these uh, dryads, the branch nymph as a leader, um, not when you've got other options that are really good, which we'll cover again in a second. Um, but the dryads, they're pretty good. They've got four attacks, strength three, one to three. And let's check out their ability. They've got a different ability for a triple called Enrapturing Song. And you can pick an enemy fighter within a number of inches of this fighter equal to the value of the ability. And then until the end of the battle round, you add one to attack characteristics of attack actions made by friendly fighters with the Silver Neth room mark and the Scout room mark that target the fighter. So you're only going to have Dryads with the Scout room mark. So you're going to want to take a bunch of those with you. And so if you give them this ability and there's a few of them in the group, then that's a lot of more attacks then going on to the enemy. And I think this is a really great ability. Again, they're only 70 points. You could take a bunch of those in with you. And so if you wanted to stick with just a box of Dryads and the Warcry Sylvaneth Warband, you know, you've got another, what, 490 points to play with here. So you could take seven Dryads and add them to your Warband, and then that's going to give you lots of options as well. And if you take one of them as your leader, which I wouldn't, then you're going to get that quad leadership ability. Now we're moving on to what's got to be my favourite miniature of the whole Sylvaneth army, and that's the Arch Revenant. And this is a stunning miniature, 
and one I would definitely want to get. And I think this is really, you're adding this on as a, like a little bonus. Um, it's going to obviously cost £22.50 for one miniature. So that's no way like a budget purchase. Um, but still, you're going to get a discount on it, maybe, at Element Games up to 20%. So that's going to bring the cost down a bit. And I think if you went with the Warcry starter set, some Dryads and this, with the discount, you're still looking at just about under um, $100 or £80. So that's not bad, to really, for the, the kind of amount of miniatures you get and the different abilities and the use you could get from them. So I think it could be well worth doing, and this miniature's awesome. So at 250 this is quite high, but you're still going to be able to take three extra dryads with you into the campaign. So it's going to give you a nice rounded warband, and I think you're going to get lots of variety and playability from it. And then doing doing this, you're almost taking all the miniatures from the Silver Neth kind of army that's available for Age of Sigmar anyway, so you're getting to use up all those different abilities. Now the good thing about taking this one as a leader is you don't just get the standard quad ability for a leader, you also get these two, so it gives you more tactics to play. Um, and this one's great, the double. Pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch, roll a dice. On a three to four, allocate one damage point. On a five to six, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of the ability. And this can be quite um, strong ability if you get those high numbers. If you start rolling those fives and sixes, and the abilities are five or six, all of a sudden you're dishing out some serious damage. And the triple's pretty good too. Until the end of the battle round, add one to attack characteristics of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by visible friendly fighters while they are within three inches of this fighter. So if you can team up this leader with the, your two of your hunters who've got the, the three or less range, then that's going to be awesome. And they're going to be able to do some real serious damage with those extra attacks to their attack characteristic. So that was the leader. Um, you've got two other options you can pick up as separate miniatures. You could have the Branch Witch or the Branch Wraith, and they're going to be 15 or £10 each. So a cheaper option for a leader, but um, they just don't look as good. Do you know what I mean? I think it's well worth that extra money to get it. Um, but ability-wise, you're going to get, for each one of these leaders, you get an extra ability on top of that quad. So... This one at the top, the Branch Witch, you're going to get Swarm of Spites, which this is a really good ability. And you pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter, roll a number of dice equal to the value of the ability, and then for every four plus, you get to allocate one point of damage. So, you know, if you've got five or sixes for the ability, you can roll five or six dice. For every four plus, it's a damage point to the fighter. So that could be a really good ability. And the one at the bottom that's going to come with the Branch Wraith, it's a triple, and that's called Blessing of the Forest. And you simply remove one damage point allocate to each fighter within six inches of this fighter. So that could be a really good ability too. So you can see with your, your different leaders, you've got some different options there. And price-wise, it's all going to keep it under 80, and that's going to give you more than enough than you'd ever need to play a campaign. This is the list I put together for the 1,400 points, and I've got as close as I can to it. And I've gone for the leader, the Arch Revenant, at 250 points. And then I thought it'd be cool to have all three of the Kurnoth Hunters. So you've got the Psy, the Great Bow, and the Great Sword. And then three Tree Revenants, two Spike Revenants, and four Dryads. So we can take quite a lot in doing this way. And we also get to use all those different abilities from the Dryads, the Spike Revenants, and the Tree Revenants. And then we've got the power of those three Kurnoth Hunters backing up the Arch Revenant, and I think this would be a really strong and fun warband to play in any campaign. Now that's the Sylvaneth taken care of, let's move on to the Seraphon, and I'm going to start off with the Skink Start Collecting set for the Seraphon, and this comes in at £60, and this set's like packed with value. You get a Star Priest that's worth £17.50, you get the Skinks, which is worth £25, and you get the Pterodon Riders, which is worth 35. And then you get this Bastilodon, which is another 35, taking up to £112.50. And this then comes down at £60. So if you can get that then with a 20% discount, then you know that's going to be another £10, £12 off that. 
So you get some great value. And although you're not going to be able to use the Bastillodon, I think it's still worth getting as a way in to using um, the Seraphon as a Warcry Warband. I've come up with a way later where you could use the Bastillodon in the game, but I think it might just be too big, uh, certainly for Warcry. But you could, you might be able to use it, and I think once you see it in person, you can kind of get a good idea for that. But we'll see later on whether that would be possible. There's another start collecting set for the Seraphon, um, and that's a little bit cheaper. That's £55, and again, you'd get a discount on that. But it doesn't come with a leader, so I don't think there's as much value in there or as, play, as much playability. So I haven't gone for that one, so I chose the start collecting skink set instead. And the first miniature in that is the Star Priest. And this is a great one to have as your leader. I mean, it looks great. It's nice and colourful. Um, a cool looking miniature. And it's got a, a range weapon. Very similar to the Necromancer from Legions of Nagash there. But we've got some decent movement. Can take some damage. And um, we'll check out the abilities next. So all the Seraphim fighters are going to get the quad. Wrath of the Old Ones. And this is really good. Until the end of the battle round, add half the value of the ability, rounding up, to both the attack and strength characteristics of attack actions made by the fighter with a range of three or less. So this is a really good quad that any of the fighters can use. Um, but this particular one has also got the double nimble retreat, where a fighter can use the ability if they're within one inch of an enemy fighter, they can make a bonus disengage action. So they can disengage, that's free, and then they can carry on moving or attacking as they wish. Okay, and this Seraphon has also got a leader ability, and this is a double called Tide of Serpents, and it picks a visible enemy fighter within 8 inches of this fighter, and rolls a number of dice equal to the value of the ability, and for each 4 to 5, allocate 1 damage point, for each 6, it's allocate 3 damage points. So similar to that one we saw earlier with the Silver Neth, but this time, if you get a 6, it's just 3 damage points. And so it doesn't matter really too much the number you get for the ability. But you still want it high because you roll that amount of dice. So, But a good ability for a double there for the leader. And now the next set that come in that box are the Terradon Riders. And you've got loads of options with these. So you can have them as Terradon Riders with Bolas or Javelin. And then they're going to have some fighter abilities. They all get that quad. But they're also going to get this nice triple here. And until the end of their activation, the next time they finish a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, they can pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of them and then allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of the ability. So that could be really strong. Again, if you've got fives or sixes, it's just instant damage. It's guaranteed damage. So that's a really good ability for these. And that's a fighter one. Um, but you can also use these same models as a Terradon Rider Alpha, if you wanted them as your leader, or a Terradon Chief, if you want them as your leader. And then they're going to come with, both of them are going to get this double cold-blooded uh, blooded commander. A fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. This fighter makes a bonus move action or a bonus attack action. So this is great. If they take someone down, they get that bonus move or attack. And then the Chief he gets this ability specifically to him, and he can add half the value of this ability, rounding up to the move characteristic for the next move action they make during this activation. You can see, like from the ability so far, this Seraphon Warband would all be about movement and getting around quickly and sneaking away, retreating, and then coming back in and back into the battle. And you've got another option as well. You can have a Ripper Dactyl Rider, so you can change it slightly. And then this is going to be a little bit tougher, a um, little less movement and a bit stronger. So this one comes with some different abilities. Everyone gets that quad again, but this one gets a really good double called Ferocious Appetite. Pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of the ability. For each 4+, plus, allocate a number of damage to that fighter. So again, 5 or 6s, you roll those, you've got 50-50 chance, so you're looking potentially 3 damage points from a double. Uh, that's not bad at all. And then you can also do this the same models as Ripodactyl Rider Alpha or Ripodactyl Chief. And then these are going to come with that double cold-blooded commander. 
So you can see tons of options just from that, those three miniatures again, and you can mix and match however you wanted to. But I still think the leader would be the star priest for sure. And now the next set that comes with it are the skinks. And these have got loads of variety too. So you've got lots of options with these. You can have them with the, the javelin and star buckler, the bolt splitter, which is like the bow and arrow and moonstone club. You can have them with the club and star buckler. So, and each of these are gonna come with, with different ranges and different power, but almost all of them have got the same, the movement. Uh, toughness is a little bit less on the bolt splitter. And I think that's a dart actually, not a bow and arrow. I think that's a dart that he shoots. Um, but they've all got the same amount of wounds they can take. So these bolt spitters, they're not tough at all. They're just going to get demolished by pretty much every other fighter who comes up against them. So you want to keep them at range for sure. Make the most of that movement and range weapon that they've got. You can also make one of these fighters into a skink alpha if you wanted them as your leader. But again, you've got to stick with that star priest. Right, so now the abilities. The Seraphon fighter abilities... These all get the Nimble Retreat on a double and the Quad Wrath of the Old Ones. And so for this box, we're not using the Bastilladon. It's not going to be included in here. It'd be too many points anyway, um, even for the idea I've got later on, which we'll go through. But for a thousand points from this box set, we could go with a Skink Star Priest as the leader, two Terradon Riders, a Ripodactyl Rider, a Skink with Bolt Spitter, and we'll have two of those, and then a skink with Moonstone Club, and we go for three of those. And so with all those fighters, that's not going to take us nicely to 995 points, really making the most of that 1,000 points. So now we're going to want to expand on this warband and move up to the 1,400 point range, ready for a campaign. And these are some that I've already bought just to make a warband out of, the Saurus Knights. And I think they look really cool, and they're going to be great on their own. But I think as an addition to that starter set, these are going to be brilliant and they can certainly add some dynamic gameplay and some speed and movement around the battlefield. So I think these would be really fun. But for £22.50, you can get a box with eight of these in and you're not going to need those to get those extra points for sure. But again, it's going to give you options and you can arm them with different weapons and things like that. And then price-wise, if we add this £22.50 to the £60, um, you know, you're close to $100 then, but with the discount, if you can get the 20% off at Element Games, then that's going to bring it down a bit more. Um, and you're also going to have loads of miniatures too, loads of variation, and it's going to just give you tons of options. So here we go. So we've got two different options for these. You can go with the Saurus Knight with Celestite Blade or the War Spear for a little bit more range. Uh, it, it changes the amount of damage you deal. But you can see they don't they don't deal too much damage there. They're not that strong, but they've got a ability which we'll see. And here we go. Here's the fighter abilities. So they've got the quad, but they've also got this great one, the triple called tear and bite. Add the value of the ability to the damage points allocated by each hit or critical hit from the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation with a range of three or less. So they're going to have that range of three or less. So if they got five or six for this this triple then they can add that to every hit or critical hit from the next action. So that's brilliant. I mean, this is where you want to be using this, where you get the most um, rolls, so using it with the blade, and then you get more attack rolls, and then you've got more chance of getting a hit or critical hit, and you can really quickly take out some of the enemy fighters with that ability. So I really like this one, and I would definitely want to include them in my warband. Now I thought if you didn't want to go for the Saurus Knights at 2250, there's another option, and this is a Razor Dawn with Skink Handler, and this comes in a set for £20, and you get three Skink Handlers and this Razor Dawn, and this acts almost like a cannon. It's got a range weapon, it's got five attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. It's pretty tough with four toughness, and it can take 20 wounds. Um, the skink handlers that come with it are very weak. The toughness is two. Um, they're not really doing any damage. They're not there to fight, really. They're there to work in conjunction with this Razor Dawn. But when we see their ability in a minute, I think you might like this. It'll be really good. And you can use it like a, a kind of cannon. And if you're doing five attack rolls per attack action with this Razor Dawn, potentially with that range, you won't have to move. So in an activation, you can attack twice 
so that's 10 rolls and then checking out this ability the hunting pack where you pick a visible friendly fighter with a beast rune mark within two inches of this fighter that fighter makes a bonus attack action so in one one activation you've got the potential there to make three attacks and that's a total of 15 dice so this is crazy so points wise as well this isn't too high and i would take in two of the handlers and then they're, if one gets killed you've always got the other one because you need them to make this ability work so i think this is great and this would be really fun to play so you could almost have him like in the back keeping the distance working like an artillery you've also got the the uh, spitters shoot in from range and then you've got the pterodons flying over and that would be such an epic battle i think it'd be great fun to play these and these skink handlers also get the nimble retreat ability too so they can really stay out of the fight and hide behind this um, beast that can take the damage for them so here i'm wondering if you could use the basilodon as the razordon as a substitute but it does look quite big in the picture here so maybe it will be too big to do that but it could be an option and then you wouldn't have to buy any other sets on top of that start collecting set. And then I suppose if you just use the skinks for your extra fires, you wouldn't need to buy any sets anyway. But if you want that variation, you want to use some different abilities and different gameplay, then you're going to need another set. So for this now, I've come up with two options for the 1400 points. So you can go for pretty much what we started with, the skink star priest, two pterodon riders, that tougher ripper dactyl and then some bolt spitters and moonstone clubs. But then I'm adding now the razor dawn and the two skink handlers. And I've just upped the bolt spitter to another extra one and the moonstone club skink an extra one too. And then that gives us 1380 points. And then the second option is to go with our first thousand point roster, but add another skink with moonstone club and then go with three Saurus Knights. So then you've got the three Saurus Knights going in like cavalry. You've got the Ripper Dactyl Rider and the Terrodon Riders coming over the top. And then you've got a little bit of range with the Bolt Spitters and then those Moonstone Clubs as well, working with the Star Priests to do some damage and make use of those abilities. So that's my picks for the Sylvaneth and the Seraphon. And I can't wait to see what the Salty Sea is going to come up with for his lists. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below and when his video comes out I'll also update on here so you know it's ready to watch. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these two lists. Maybe put down what you would add, take away, what leaders you would go with or what kind of main fighters you'd want to include in these war bands. It'd be great to hear your thoughts and feedback. I'll put links to everything we've gone through in the video down in the description too and there'll be affiliate links to Element Games where you can save up to 20% but they won't cost you anything extra, in fact they're going to save you that money and for every sale made through an affiliate link I get a small commission and that's going to help me grow the channel, make more videos like this. Uh, so thanks so much for that support, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.